Hey yo, what is up and welcome to Ninja Geek Games. Now we all know the current situation with isolation sucks and it sucks big time. But as long as you're inside, you're safe, right? So I decided to help you guys out and give you a rundown on the top five light to medium card games that can be played solo. Why solo? Well, currently it's the only option that most of us have. And also I have no friends, so solo is all I've got. Only joking, I have friends. <clears throat> Lots, loads of them. Now, these aren't the top five solo card games out there. This is just a list of the top five that I've been playing recently and think you should too. For example, I haven't included Terraforming Mars, even though I really like that game. I feel it's just the wrong side of light medium games that I'll be discussing. Um, I haven't included Aeon Zen, for example, for the simple reason I already have a deck builder in this list. Spoiler alert, um, and I just prefer that one. For each game, I'll give a brief overview um, and why it made my list. If you like the content of my channel, then please hit subscribe and we can get going from five to one. So in at number five is the smallest game on the list and it's Samurai Spirit. Now in this game, you take on the role of a sword wielding samurai to protect a village against a bunch of ninja like raiders. Um, although I've been playing it solo, it can actually be played with up to seven players, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a type of push your luck game where players draw cards from a deck of raiders um, and they have to decide whether to place that card to the left or the right of their player board. And this is termed confronting or defending. If you defend, the raider uh, card must show an icon of one of the village areas that you're protecting. If you confront, then you need to move your meeple along your battle track equal to the value of the, uh, the raider's battle value. Players take turns doing this until the Raider deck is empty, and at this time each Samurai needs to ensure they have one card of each of the three icons required to defend on um, their side of the player board. Or farmsteads and family tokens are removed from the village boards, and plus wounds can be taken. Now each Samurai also has a unique talent um, that they can use and it can also be shared with other Samurai, and these range from things like um, passing Raider cards from one player to the next, or just ignoring the Raider abilities altogether. There's also a really nice mechanic if you want to use the special unique, um, special power called uh, Kia. And you can use this whenever your meeple lands on the last space exactly of your battle track on your Samurai board. This powerful ability includes adding barricades back onto the damaged village or removing uh, Raider cards from the stacks, for example. Lastly, a really cool ability that I really like is that when injured, these samurais can transform into their animal spirit, hence the name. And this includes things like tigers, boars, wolves, um, and these have improved talents and cure abilities as well. Now the game lasts for a maximum of three rounds and the samurais need to ensure that the village remains intact um, after each of the assaults. The setup is quick and the gameplay is really simple and fun. The artwork for the game is great um, and the player boards, tokens and other components are also of a really decent quality. The animal side of the player boards look awesome and are really well received in the second and third rounds of the game as the game does get progressively harder. Now overall, um, this is a really fun light game. Uh, you pick it up easy, the rules are simple and the game plays out really well. The push your luck aspect with the game is whether you decide to confront the raiders where you have to fill up your battle track in hope of gaining your key ability over deciding to defend to protect the family, the peasants and the farmstead, which is a must if you want to win the game. Um, I actually take control of three samurais when playing so that I can adequately make use of the supporting abilities from each. Uh, when playing, the game lasts for about 20 to 30 minutes and to play you can mix up the samurai you take into um, battle for varied games. Um, plus it also has root walls to um, support easier and tougher games, and that's Samurai Spirit. Now the number four spot is taken up by Dark Souls the card game. Now I have the board game as a Kickstarter backer, um, and it's great. Some say that it does grind as a dungeon crawler, but that's Dark Souls for you. Um, I was a little dubious about getting this, um, as it came out whilst backers were still waiting for their um, board game stretch goals. But I grabbed a copy anyway, as Dark Souls is, is just great in general. Um, so unkindled ones, are you ready? Uh, Dark Souls, um, the card game, involves you taking control of a character from the console game. Uh, and these include the Assassin, Herald, Knight and the Sorcerer. Um, and you're required to defeat enemies, expand your deck and ultimately fight a boss. Now all players start the game with a basic deck of 28 cards um, and you need to explore by drawing encounter cards and these list the uh, number and types of enemies that you'll need to be defeated. And this is very similar to the uh, board game. 
The characters have two types of cards in their deck. Um, and this include equipment, and these are used to attack or defend with, um, and stamina cards. Now, stamina is the big part of the console and the board game, uh, and also in the card game too. Um, it's used to pay for actions on the equipment cards that you have in your deck. When you defeat enemies, um, you gain souls, which is the currency for buying um, additional stamina cards. Um, and the encounter cards will then list any treasures gained um, for defeating all those enemies on it. What's clever is you may need to actually tailor your um, stamina cards um, that you buy into your deck to ensure that you have the correct type for any newly gained equipment. Um, the game timer is a deck of bonfire cards um, that when rested at, they flip to reveal an ability, uh, plus give you an increased maximum deck size. The game contents are excellent, which is pretty standard for all Steamforge games. There's an enemy board, character board, and a double-sided encounter board. Within the game, there's a ton of cards. Um, the tokens are pretty nice, and typically the artwork is sorrowful and dark. Now, the gameplay for Dark Souls, the card game, is great. Um, enemies attack based on player position, on their board, um, and also on the player taunt level. Each of the enemy cards does have quite a lot of info on it, and this includes unique special abilities, spawn sites, and various other stats. Each of the character players also plays differently, where the knight can block and defend better than the other characters. The herald's able to help the party out by healing them. Now, each character also has its own heroic ability to use, and when playing the game, I actually play with two characters at a time. Now, there's more than enough um, in this base game with four heroes, four bosses, loads of enemies and equipment. However, Forgotten Paths is an expansion, and this does add um, the traps and terrain mechanics, four more bosses to play, and two characters. Now, this is a great game without the expansion, and there's also a second one available as well. Now, is it a deck builder? Is it a dungeon crawler? Well, I think both. However, hand manage management is the uh, most vital part of the game here, though. Um, now, as this game is generally under £30, it's well worth having in your collection, uh, just for the amount of content in the core game alone. And that's Dark Souls the card game. Now, next up at number three is Arkham Horror the card game. I know what a lot of you are saying is, oh my God, how come it's only hit position three? It's madness. Uh, excuse the pun. Well, listen, it's a fantastic game, but the only reason it's at position three is because of the amount of additional content um, needed to play the various campaigns, and this may be difficult for people to get hold of during isolations that chill. Um, now, I love everything Arkham and Eldritch by Lovecraft, where I have most of the Eldritch horror board game on the shelf behind me. I've read a lot of the books, and I even have a wicked awesome tattoo of someone you might recognise on my arm. Now, in this game, you'll take on the role of one of the investigators and you're trying to solve mysteries using your pre-constructed deck uh, with decisions in the game resulting in consequences that may affect um, later games during that chapter or campaign. During the game, players take actions uh, and use their deck to fight enemies, solve mysteries, um, use abilities and travel to various locations throughout the Arkham City. Um, you need to try and progress through the act deck while doing this. However, as with all Arkham games, there are forces of evil that try to hinder you at every turn to prevent your progress. Um, they want to advance the agenda deck and essentially make you go insane. The Arkham Horror card game is beautifully dark and gritty. Events that happen now may scar your investigator for future games, and sometimes you'll be presented with difficult decisions. At time, you can complete a chapter that results in an unwelcome ending, but remember, you chose that. Um, with each investigator, you can construct your own deck uh, with general and specific cards so that the replay value here is huge. Also, the game offers a point gaining system uh, so you can level up, making them more powerful um, as the campaign progresses. The stories are deep and intriguing, uh, and they do suck you into a uh, world of madness and fear. Now this game oozes theme, everything you could expect from the Lovecraft mythos. There are monsters, cultists, and other beings that are pulled from a missile deck during the game. Um, whether you fight, investigate, um, or a mythos card requires you to test some sort of skill, um, you need to modify your skill value with uh, cards that can be supplemented from other investigators, um, or your own deck, 
Uh, and then you need to draw a random chaos token from a pre-constructed pool of tokens that will either add a positive or negative modifier or cause a certain game effect to occur depending on the symbol shown on that token. And this differs with every single game. The deck construction for each investigator is a great part of the game um, where you really do get to know your character to build that deck and that can also be coincided with the benefits from the investigator skills. Um, now during the game I always play as two investigators um, which can be done quite easily. However, the game is hard and brutal and can be unforgiving at times um, but that does appear to be seen with most games of this theme. Um, now you also need to put in as well. Uh, this includes an additional core game uh, plus the additional campaign cycles that have been released um, and this should also in include some sort of storage container as very soon you'll, be, you'll start racking up those card numbers very very quickly. Um, so if you do like tough campaign driven games that have plenty of theme then Arkham Horror the card game is perfect for you. Now number two is my favourite dungeon crawling card game, Warhammer Quest the Adventure card game. Now this takes me back right back to the mid 90s when Games Workshop released their amazing board game Warhammer Quest. Um, now this is a campaign based adventure card game where you take control of a hero and explore deep and dark locations to fight enemies and ultimately fight a nemesis of some sort. Now you can play as a number of characters and this includes the warrior priest, the ironbreaker dwarf, the bright wizard and the waywatcher rogue and they're all really awesome. Now, each hero has just four basic starter action cards that allow them to fight, explore, rest and aid. Um, now the contents of these cards differs between heroes um, and to activate them you tap them um, and that results in that card being exhausted and unusable until the hero uses an action card with a prepare icon and this allows them to then ready and reset all of their um, cards. Now whilst exploring enemies will assault you from the shadows um, and the peril trap will also cause uh, nasty events to occur during the game. For campaign play uh, a quest sheet will indicate which enemies are present um, and this does include some nasty surprises like orc brutes or giant spiders. Uh, when exploring you may gain items and gear and this can help you throughout the quest or, or you can be surprised with traps. The artwork is really really nice and the gameplay is really simple yet challenging forcing you to think about which action card you wish to play. Now this game is great, it's gritty and you really do feel like you're in a dungeon crawler as the locations also have special effects that can hinder or help the party during the game. With campaign play you can gain upgraded action cards that are more powerful as well as gain more gear slots and legendary weapons specific to your particular hero. Now the consequences of some of your actions may come back to haunt you in later chapters during the campaign. You don't kill that nemesis in one campaign, well they'll come back and wreak havoc later on. If you don't want to play campaign, the game does offer uh, what's called a delve quest where you can create one big chapter to include multiple nemesis, multiple enemies, as well as all the levelling up um, gear cards and legendary items just for that one game. Now for the sad bit. Um, Fantasy Flight Games um, lost their licence for Games Workshop IP and therefore this game is out of print. Um, and because of that, it didn't get the expansions that it deserved. Um, there were two hero expansions and I was lucky enough to get both the Witch Hunter and the Troll Slayer and they're both awesome to play with. Um, however, if you want to get them now, they do go for stupid money. On the bright side, um, this game does go pretty cheap and I've seen it on face group, uh, Facebook groups um, for as low as £10, uh, which is an absolute bargain for the, for the amount of content you get in this game. Fantasy Flight Games did release um, Heroes of Terranoth, which is essentially the exact same game, but it's based in the Runebound universe. However, um, I do prefer the artwork um, in this version, it's far superior and to date um, Heroes of Terranoth doesn't seem to be further supported by expansions either. Now, regardless, this game is fantastic. Um, I do play the Delve quests more often um, than the campaign, as the campaign play is a little bit disjointed, um, but still worth getting the game if you can find it. And now the number one solo card game that I've been playing, and it's probably also my um, number one card game ever, is Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. Um, now I love the Alien franchise with Aliens being one of my favourite movies ever so there may be some bias towards this game for that reason. Um, one of my other favourite films is Predator so seeing there's a, there's a game for each I was a little bit of a dilemma when getting these but I think I definitely chose the right one. Now with this game 
you get to choose one of the four movies to play. So the good ones, Alien and Aliens, the meh one, number three, and the one that nobody remembers. But again, I'll watch them over and over. Um, anyway, as with most deck builders, you start the game with a deck of basic cards. Um, and these allow you to reveal and attack enemies or buy more powerful cards that you can use to add to and expand your deck. Now with each game, you'll have a number of objectives to complete um, and you have to do this whilst trying to expand your deck and deal with enemies and unwanted events. The enemy deck will slide down what's known as the complex track during the game and you have to pay to reveal these cards and defeat them uh, before they reach the combat zone um, where they'll de deal damage. Now when dealt damage, there's a novel approach here where you draw from a deck of strike cards um, and these cards have various grades of damage um, and some of them have face huggers. Now if you ever during the game draw a face hugger, you and the other players, they have a very, very limited amount of time um, before it actually lays an egg inside you, um, which is actually a card that goes into your discard pile. Later on in the game, when you draw that, um, you're out the game. So, <laughs> Um, now the cards you gain to upgrade your deck are all represented by characters from the films that you're playing in for that game, um, so it does have a um, nostalgic feeling. Each of these character decks has a number of different cards um, from four different characters. Um, you can also select cards from the Apone deck, which has the um, iconic look into my eye phrase on there. Now this game comes with an awesome neoprene mat and hundreds and hundreds of cards. Uh, once the game has been opened and organised properly, the setup is pretty simple, although you do need to be able to recognise the different card decks. The cards have um, fantastic and quite gruesome artwork, which is pretty awesome. Um, and the, the character cards all have unique abilities and keywords that, when played, can be linked um, to other cards to, uh, and chained to create some really powerful turns. Other options for gameplay can include a hidden traitor mechanic, as one player can play as an android, uh, and you can also play as the alien. Now, I've used this a few times and it's really fun to do, but unfortunately you can't do this in solo mode. Um, now, when playing solo, I take control of two characters so that I can um, utilise the coordinate ability, which is really handy. When setting up a game for the objective deck, you can also choose some random aliens uh, from an alien deck that add more variety into the game. Now, one expansion includes more characters um, to use in the scenarios to replace the existing ones and also has two new scenarios to play. And I only recently discovered that there's a second expansion for this game, um, but I think it's still um, waiting release in the UK, which is a shame. Now, regardless, this is a great game. Um, the cards have some awesome comic style artwork. And if you like the films, then this game will be perfect for you. It can be difficult um, at times, um, but it's such a rewarding game when you get to chain link that um, number of cards for a really big attack or a big spend to gain some powerful cards in the game, such as the power loader. Um, it's perfect for solo play, really, really enjoyable to play through all the films in order and um, to try and evade face huggers, set up sentry guns and fight the queen. Um, and so that's it for uh, Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. Game over, man. So that's my favourite solo card games that I've been playing recently. Um, I could have included, included a few more, such as Aeon's End, but I've just finished the Legacy game. And I think Legendary uh, trumps this game just for the fact that it's aliens. Um, I've also been playing Edge of Darkness by AEG Games 2. Um, if you're not familiar with that game, I actually unbox it in episode 5, so you should go and take a look. Um, but that's got other mechanics such as worker placement, um, so I didn't include it in this, in this video, but it is a great uh, engine building game as well. Uh, so that's it from Ninja Geek Games. Let me know what you think of my list in the comments um, and what solo card games that you're currently playing. I'm always really interesting to, um, to read what other people are playing. Um, lastly, if you're enjoying the content, uh, then please subscribe to Ninja Geek Games. And until next time, game over, man!